Today is Friday the 13th, so I thought I'd do something special today. Why not retrospective of the Friday the 13th franchise? It seems like the best time to do it. Oh, and by the way, I'm covering the first nine films, plus Jason X and Freddy Freddy's Jason. I never saw the remake, and I plan on keeping it that way. The first film is a classic. It has some creative kills, the atmosphere is haunting, it's just great. What makes it even weirder is that this film is actually a ripoff. That's right, the famous Friday the 13th series started as a ripoff of another horror movie. Of what you may ask? Why none other than Halloween. Apparently the producers came in one day and announced that they would just simply rip off Halloween. Simple as that. It's obvious that the film is inspired by John Carpenter's 1978 classic. The POV shots, teenagers acting bad, etc. Despite being a follow the leader, as TVTropes.com, one of my favorite websites would call it, it's still pretty cool. One thing many might not know is that Jason is not actually the killer in this film. It's actually his mother, Pamela Voorhees, played by Betsy Palmer. Jason drowned back in the 50s and it drove her insane. She's then behead beheaded by the first film's heroine, Alice. At the end of the film, Alice is shown in a boat, very dreamlike. Everything seems to be calm until a decaying young boy pulls her underwater. Alice then wakes up seemingly from a dream, but Jason is still out there. The second one is the first film in the series to feature Jason as the killer. The film doesn't feature the legendary hockey mask, but rather a flower sack with eye holes personally cut out. Personally, I think the second one isn't quite as good as the first one, but it's still fun. It has some interesting kills, but I don't think it's anything special. The next film is pretty cool. Friday the 13th, Part 3D. Yes, this was back in 1982, so this was real 3D. And as far as these type of movies go, it's one of the best of its kind. And it's also one of the best in the series. Maybe the best, but that's all up for debate. For instance, there's a scene where the guy's eye pops out, and it's pretty cool to see something like that in 3D. This is also the first film in the series to feature Jason in his trademark hockey mask. And the filmmakers chose a hockey mask randomly, not knowing it would become a pop culture icon. The fourth one, the final chapter, yeah, I know, let's continue. This is arguably one of the best slasher movies of all time. It is so much fun. It also introduces the character of Tommy Jarvis, and he becomes a more central character in the next few films. In this movie, he's played by Donatello himself, Corey Feldman. That's a lot of great characters, including one played by Crispin Glover. Tommy later kills Jason with his own machete. Like I said, this was supposed to be the final film in the series, but it made money at the box office, and when that happens, there's only one thing to do. Make another one. Without Jason. Kinda. Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning, is really weird. It's possibly the most bizarre film in the series. Tommy Jarvis, who's played by a different actor now, is sent to a halfway house due to being haunted by memories of Jason. Early in the film, a kid annoys the other teenagers, specifically a teenager named Vic, who kills the kid with an axe, really for no reason. There's also other characters like this redneck woman and her yokel son, as a cinema snob would call him, who I have to admit are pretty entertaining. I'll just go ahead and say who the killer is. The killer is Roy, a paramedic and the father of the kid killed by Vic. They don't exactly do a good job of hiding this. Why Roy even dresses up as Jason is a mystery to me. How he gains Jason's invincibility and super strength is beyond me. Does he just get Jason's abilities by wearing his costume like that stupid movie The Tuxedo? This is my least favorite film in the series, but it still has its moments. Part 6, Jason Lives, is a huge improvement. This is also the first film to feature the new zombified Jason. I personally prefer this Jason compared to the early ones, but that's just me. This movie is another one that's really fun. At the beginning of this movie, Tommy Jarvis and his friend, played by Horshack from Welcome Back, Cotter, attempted to dig up Jason and destroy his corpse once and for all. However, lightning strikes Jason's corpse and becomes the lumbering zombie we all know and love. In this film, Crystal Lake is renamed Forest Green. How did they come up with that name? I mean, I know they have to change the name to protect its identity, but still. 
When I hear the term 80s slasher, this is usually the first movie that comes to mind. And I definitely recommend this one, without a doubt. Part 7, The New Blood, is pretty cool as well. It's also the first film in the series to feature the legendary Kane Hodder as Jason. His performance is great, especially near the end of the movie. The film's main character is Tina, who has telekinetic powers. Near the end of the film, the telekinetic Tina takes Jason on a wild ride, dropping roofs on Jason, throwing planted pots at Jason, even setting him on fire. In fact, Kane Hodder set a record at the time for the longest uninterrupted controlled burn being set on fire for 40 minutes. Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. What a movie. It's kind of weird to talk about this movie. And it honestly could have been awesome. I mean, but despite the title, most of the film takes place on a cruise boat. Due to this, I've often called this film Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes a Cruise. Let's face it, that's really what it is. Only the last third of the film takes place in Manhattan, and even then it wasn't even New York. It was Canada. But nevertheless, I still really like this movie. Sort of a horror guilty pleasure, if you will. There's a couple of funny scenes in here. Jason walks through M Manhattan and knocks over some punk's boombox. Remember those? Yeah, me neither. There's also a scene where an aspiring boxer attempts to fight Jason with his bare hands. And well, we just know it's not going to end well. After a couple minutes, he's tired out and Jason decapitates him with one punch. This film is really silly, but I love it. The next film is The Final Friday. This is actually the first Friday the 13th film to be released by New Line Cinema. The film begins with Jason magically being back at Crystal Lake. How do you get back from Manhattan anyway? I can just picture Jason riding a charter bus from Manhattan to Crystal Lake. That would be one wild ride. Anyway, the plot involves Jason being killed by a government task force and being taken to the morgue. Somehow, Jason's spirit possesses several people and kills several guards, including one played by Kane Hodder himself. The plot is a bit weird and it's as far removed from the series as possible, but like Jason Takes Manhattan, I do like this one as a guilty pleasure, and I do appreciate that they did try and do something new with it. One great character in the film is Creighton Duke, a bounty hunter. I actually kind of wish this character had appeared in more of the Friday the 13th films, it's kind of crazy Ralph in the first two. But whatever. This film is really weird, but I still really like it. At the very end of the film, J Freddy Krueger's glove tra drags Jason's mask under, setting the stage for Freddy for this Jason. However, the film ended up being delayed due to script problems. The tie fans over a tenth film was made called Jason X, which takes place in space. Because that always works. This movie is okay. There's a couple cool kills in there, and the design of Uber Jason is pretty cool, but it's pretty forgettable. Freddy vs. Jason is really cool. I love this film, and I highly recommend it for both fans of A Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th. In the film, Freddy's power has weakened due to Springwood forgetting about him, as well as locking up the remaining teenagers at Weston Hills. Freddy recruits Jason by disguising himself as Jason's mother. Jason kills most of the teenagers, and Freddy slowly regains power. However, Jason doesn't stop killing, and Jason and Freddy fight. The death scenes are really cool, and the fight scenes between Freddy and Jason are great. The end was worked on for a long time, and one even featured Pinhead. How awesome would that have been? The ending of the movie features Jason being set on fire and being launched in the lake, while Freddy is beheaded by Rory, the film's pro protagonist. But not before Frey is impaled by his own glove via Jason, who also tore Frey's arm off in an earlier fight scene. The following morning, at least I'm guessing that's what it is, Jason comes out of the water with Frey's head, which winks. I personally think Jason won the fight, but that's just me. So that's all the Frey of the 13 movies. Most of these movies are really fun. There's a few clunkers in there, but most of them are great. The Friday the 13th series is one of the greatest slasher movie series in history, and no remake will ever change that. I absolutely love these movies. The horror genre is my favorite film genre of all time, and the legacy of Friday the 13th will always live on. Happy Friday the 13th, everybody.